Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Linda's Stampin' Escape for our Technique Tuesday, August 24th. Come on in and join us. Welcome, welcome. How is everybody doing tonight? I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share this awesome fun fold. Hi, Barb. All right. Whew. Everybody got through the downpour this afternoon. It was raining really heavy. Ugh. I'm still having a bad hair day, but that's okay. I'm not going anywhere. And so far, you can't see me. You can see my hands. <laughs> that's another story. So yeah, tonight we are. I'm going to be sharing my take on the pinwheel tower card. Here it is. Um, this is one of the hottest trends in fun fold cards right now. So you're going to love this one. Hello, Kathy. So it's really simple to make. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. And you're going to love the fact that it fits into an A2 size envelope. So this little beauty is going to tuck right inside your regular envelopes that you make your cards with. So that's going to be nice. Um, I have all the measurements for you and got everything pre-cut and I've got some extra samples. So we're going to leave this all right here. This is, we're going to make our card, not with this one, but pieces from the Whimsy Wonder. So that's why that paper was sitting there. We're going to put that away for now. So best popped in to say hello from on her way from Boston to Cape Cod. Oh, we will have fun. You have fun on vacation. Bring me back a lobster. Just kidding. <laughs> My other friends are out there too, and I told them the same thing. Bring me back a lobster. So anyhow, Beth, have fun out there. And if you can peek in every now and then to see what we're doing, that'd be cool. Um, I'm actually going to show you the card first. Unbelievable, right, ladies? I don't usually do that. But I fell in love with this card, and I saw a fellow demonstrator doing that. And they pretty much see how it folds, and then it flips, and it flips again. But I like to create a front. So that is what I did here. So this one here... I used the elegantly said greeting with, of course, the coordinating punch. I think quite a few of you have this one already. So, and then I want to share this awesome paper with you. This is a hostess paper, just to let you know. But it's a huge, huge, huge pack. So this is called Pattern Party Designer Paper. It is a hostess gift. And I don't know if I can, I just want to kind of flick through this, trying to see if I can let you see this here. Oh my goodness. 12 by 12, so I want to play very nice under here. Here we go. So now I can flip through this so you can see all the fun patterns. So it's colored on one side and black and white on the other. So, many uses for this paper. Coordinates with some of our um, stamp sets and bundles. So that makes it even more fun, right? Oh, it's just so cool, the patterns that it has. So yes, this is a hostess gift. And we were just talking about clubs tonight. And, hi Dawn. <laughs> And our hostesses in club actually could earn that. So also with this, 
I have our fun. This is the, can you catch this edge right here and tell that I was painting it or coloring it? This is our Ganza ribbon with the little sparkles on. And then I use the Granny Apple Green. And then these are the Opal Rounds. So glitter, glitter equals more glitter. So that is basically how I did this card. So I cut the pattern so that this actually looks like the front of a regular card. And then you can flip it and get the other colors. And then what would be the back when it's standing up, I put a little die in there. You guys have punches, so you could probably get that. So um, this will fit a gift card, or it will, you know, you could stick a $10 bill in there, whatever you'd like, and then the back. So this is how it stands. And here's all the cute little patterns and then this sits nicely and just pops right into your envelope so as you can see once again I took my Stampin blends and I colored that organza ribbon and my little opal round and it matches really nice so that's card number one and I got all the dimensions here, and I'm actually going to walk step by step through it. All right. And then I couldn't get away without doing a Christmas one, so I did one. Again, I like to make it look like it's the front of a regular card. And here I use the Tidings and Trimmings stamp set and dies. So that's a bundle that is in the big catalog, not in the mini. So this one's in the big catalog, and it comes with the dies and the wonderful stamp set. And I thought it would be fun to actually stamp right on this gorgeous paper. And then I cut out my little stocking with the dies. And then you get to see all the pretty paper. And just like my front, I put this on the back so it was light enough that you could actually write your greetings on it. So, hi Dawn, how are you tonight? I do believe Dawn is the one who told me about these tower cards. So I had to check it out and she is right there. Lots of fun and easy to make. So you'll notice on this one though, I have no borders. So what I did was the pieces that you cut the card stock to, the four and a quarter by two and three quarters, I cut the same for my designer paper. No border. This one has a border. I kind of like the border. And what I like best about the border is on this one you have to cut four and a quarter. Doesn't matter too much on this designer paper because this is a six by six. But on these you have 12 by 12s. So when you're working with the 12 by 12s, I like the four inch um measurement versus the four and a quarter so it'll save you a little paper that way so now that you saw these two little cuties let's get to doing some stamping okay so you are going to start out with your tower piece that's what we're going to call the center is called the tower so there's the center or the tower and that is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of cardstock, or you could use designer paper. On this one, I use designer paper. See how nice and flat it gets? And on this one, I used cardstock. So it's a little bit thicker here than what you get there. But it's, it's not that big of a deal, and they're both fit in the envelope nicely, so... Um, if you got lots of designer paper and you want it a little bit thinner, go ahead and use it. Otherwise, um, you can use the cardstock. So this will be your tower. Again, it is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. 
and then we are going to score this. And I'm actually going to flip this because I want that on the inside. Turn this down so you can see. And we're going to hit our one inch mark, get our score blade. How do you like that? I even wrote score on there. That's so I don't accidentally grab the other one, even though it's dark. I don't want to accidentally grab that one and then cut my cardstock. So one inch, two inch, three inches. Okay, and then at four. So pretty easy to remember, one, two, three, four. And then you have a quarter inch left over. All right. And then you're going to get four pieces that you're going to cut at four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And let me just show you how nice that works. should have grabbed a piece of paper earlier okay so let me pull this out here so you're gonna take your four and a quarter right there now we're gonna get that cutting blade in here so there's your four and a quarter and now these pieces are going to be four and a quarter by two and three quarters so let's do our two and three quarters, which is one quarter shy of the three. We got that little piece in there. Two, three, and four. And what's nice about this is it uses one half of the paper. And because this sheet is sized four and a quarter, you can just cut this at four and a quarter. And you've used less than, now you got a nice base for another card. And you've got your four pieces of cardstock here that you need for your tower card. Very simple, less than one piece of cardstock. All right. Then your designer papers, you're going to want four of them at four inches by two and a half. So here's your four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And we're going to cut that down to four and two and a quarter, or two and a half, I'm sorry. There you go. You need four of those. And then once you get those on you're gonna find little little sides and those will be you'll need four of those and those are four inches again by one and a half so let's get that out of the way and I'm just gonna refresh you right there so this way you can stop the video once I turn it into a, um, a video you'll be able to stop it and get those measurements so again, the tower is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then you score at one, two, three, and four. You have four pieces of cardstock, which will get glued to your tower. And I'll show you that in a, just a second. Four and a quarter by two and three quarters. This takes up one whole side of your eight and a half by 11 paper. So a half a sheet there. And then your four pieces of designer paper, which will be four inches by two and a half, and then the little guys, which are four inches by one and a quarter. All right, so now you know all that, and you got those measurements. We are going to take, I'm gonna go this way, because I'm actually going to glue, I need a block here. Nice, 
I like to make sure I have really nice creases and the reason for that is it helps me line up my um, cardstock. Now let me flip over my designer paper so you can get a real good look at that whimsy wonder. There we go. We're going to use those pieces and these pieces. Gorgeous, right? Oh, I love this paper. All right. For my tower here, I am going to use glue. And then once I get the designer paper on, I'll probably just use my adhesive. I'll use glue if he lets me. There we go. Okay, so we're going to add the glue, and then you can just put that there and flip that right over. All right, and let it set. <laughs> Be nice, buddy. Usually, when I was making cards before, it grabbed. When I was making my first samples, it just grabbed it and ran away with it. Okay, so here we got our little column or our tower, whatever you want to call it. Hi, Cheryl. You can rewatch the beginning, Cheryl, because we have um, a couple other samples, and then I have the measurements on there as well. So welcome, welcome. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is start adding our pieces of cardstock. And the designer paper is going to go over the top of that, so I'm not going to worry. So let's just add our adhesive right onto here. There we go. We'll flip that. And it's easier if you put your adhesive right onto your column versus your um, paper here, because you're not going to know where your edge is. This just makes life a lot easier. There we go. If you want, get down, flip that over. And see, we're covering up my little measurements there for you, but right up to that little score line there. There we go. And then our last one right here. So you can have four of them. And ladies, we have a pinwheel here. So there we go. There is our tower with our pinwheel. And now we can start adding our designer papers. I like to figure out which way I want my front. So I think I'm going to use this as my front. So what I would like is this piece here. And with the Whimsy Wonder designer paper, I am using the mint macaron or macaroon, whatever you want to call it. I believe it's macaron. I'm going to use that one. And then if you flip this side over here, you'll see that's a full sheet, the bigger one. So we're going to do that because I like my front pieces to match. But you guys can go and have as much fun with this as you want. I've seen samples where every single one was a different pattern. How fun is that? Okay, now you can put your adhesive onto your designer paper. And then we're gonna add this on here. Get a nice border around there. Okay. A bigger piece. This is going to be my front again. Some people don't have fronts. Some do. It's all up to you. You guys can have as much fun with this card as you want. This Once you know this layout, you can go crazy. Right, Dawn? <laughs> I 
I do believe it was Dawn who told me about this card. So I had to go look it up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a winner. This is fun to make, and I am going to share this one. You could add more to it. You could put a white piece in here or you could leave it blank and that could be the one where you um, want to um, put your greeting in there for someone, your sentiment. That's what I'm thinking of. As long as it's not a Dear John letter, we're good. All right, so there, this is such gorgeous paper. Flip it this way. Let's do, let me see here. See, I like to play. I wanna see where I get my colors and where I wanna go next. So I think I'm gonna do this one. Such a soft, pretty palette for this Christmas card here. All right. That's the big one, and the tree is going over there. So I think I have an extra piece. Oh no, it goes over here. Sometimes I overthink things. All right, we're just gonna put this one down. You know, if you make everyone different, you wouldn't have to think, would you? Just put them all in there. You could make a lot more the same, which on this one, I did a lot of the, um, there we go, stick that over there see which one I want over here. I'm going to do this one. Um, I think I only used three patterns on the hostess one. And I have four different patterns on this one. So you can just play with as much of it as you want. All right, we only have one more piece left and I already have my adhesive on. We're wrapping our tree here in holly. So on both sides of this, we have our holly, and then each one you look at is just a little bit different. So I chose, this is my front, so that is where I'm gonna put my greeting. And again, I've seen people put little corners down here, so you could put a little corner piece in. Um, I'll show you that tomorrow on my blog. I'll do one of those little corner piece where you could stick a um, little money card or something in there. We are going to do a greeting. So our greeting comes again from the tidings and trimming stamp set. I'm going to use the Noel. I didn't want to grab three different bundles today so I just stuck with the same one. And we're going to use mint macaroon. Macaron. Ton said, when you can't decide what card to make, you can combine them all and have a... Oh, yeah, that's true. You can have a really fun card. Hi, Chris. Glad you could join us. Ooh, Linda, you are not going to put adhesive on that. All right, so we're going to stamp our Noel on here. Again, the mint macaron. <laughs> All right, so I grabbed the double oval. So I just grabbed a piece of scrap here from my cuttings. And we're gonna punch that out. There we go. And then we'll do the same with the top. We'll have that nice little greeting there. I think Noel is very pretty with Oh, and you know what? I didn't grab any bling bling. Oh my gosh, that is unusual for me, isn't it, ladies? Although, 
I did pull out the, um, this is, it's called frayed grow grain. So the edges are all frayed out. It's really pretty. And this is in Blushing Bride, which coordinates with this set. It's actually part of the bundle, actually the suite that it comes out of. And we're going to add some dimensionals. So much easier to find things when you have your stamp room organized. Hello, Cindy, and hello, Vicki. Glad you ladies could join us. All right. Cindy worked so hard, but I'm glad she could get home in time to see us tonight. There we go. There is our pretty Noel. And I am going to pop this. I'm going to pop that right on top, kind of like it was a little ornament. So let's grab our dots here. Keep rolling back till I find one. There we go. Look at how nice this made a bow. That really tied nice. Of course, Kathy thinks I'm the bow wizard. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. daughter just sent me a picture of my great-grandson. They forget that I have cards tonight. There we go. He's adorable. If I could share that picture with you, I would. All right. So there we go. Simple. You could put some little bling in there, but you know what? With the foil already in your designer paper, I don't know if you really need any more bling unless you add it directly to the Noel down here. And then just flip it and flip it and flip it. And Dawn's right. You can actually make like different card scenes on here. And it, oh my gosh, it's so cute. But for our first one here, I wanted to keep it a little bit simple. But that doesn't mean we can't get pretty, right, you guys? I love this paper. Again, this is the Whimsy Wonder. And it is on page 25 of your holiday catalog. So that's that one. And then we have our Tidings and Trimmings, which is here. And I left room. That's where I'm doing my greeting on, or my sentiment. Got that one. And then we got our fun, bright colored pattern party designer paper. Oh my gosh, my granddaughters would love these colors. Look at that. And they would like the fact that grandma can actually stick money in there for them. I'm sure they would like that too. Now, here's a boo-boo, but who's going to know that but me, right? Or you, you know what I mean, as far as... I cut my piece too small, so I cut the green one in half and just made it work. And hey, it looks really fun. So there we go. That is our pinwheel tower card. So fun. Lays nice and flat. Perfect for sending. But what a unique card to give someone. And super simple to make. I have to thank Dawn again for pointing this one out to me. These are so cool. So these three will be on my blog and then I'll share another one with you. I have one more that I will share with you on my blog tomorrow. That just showcases another designer paper and then I'll add that little pocket to it. So, so. Cindy said Kathy could do those for her Thanksgiving place settings. What a cute idea. That would work really nice. So, oh my gosh. Ladies, I am glad to have you back tonight. And it was happy to have our first in-home class in almost two years. Oh, it was nice. So, don't you dare take off on me. We have a drawing to do. 
I am going to give away a sampling of the wonderful gems. We use those on Thursday night and they are really cool because they are a lot like those opal rounds. They have that nice glitter on the inside, but then again, they're also facet, oh, excuse me, faceted. So they're like dually exciting. Is that a word? Dually exciting. So they are faceted and they have the glitter inside. So they're called wonderful gems and they aren't kidding. They're pretty, pretty, pretty. So let's haul out the, I love how you guys get to chit chat. You just wait because I'm going to figure out how to get our little faces on here. So I know I can do Zoom, but I haven't Zoomed over there yet. So I will figure that out just so we can be more in touch. All right. Ladies, cross your fingers and hope your name falls on there. And let's get spinning. Three, two, one. Good luck, ladies. Whoa, that was close. You know what? Um, that went back to back to Kathy, but. It said Barb, so tell you girls what I'm going to do. I'm going to give half the pack to Kathy and half the pack to Barb. How is that, ladies? So you both won tonight because I have never seen it fall right on the line before. So congratulations, Kathy and Barb Wallace, because we also have another Barb. So congratulations, ladies. They will be in your little fun pile. Of course, everybody kind of picked all their goodies up. So I just got a couple long distance ones to mail out. So thank you for joining me tonight. You will find this replay on my blog tomorrow. And that's Linda Stampin' Escape. Or you can find it on YouTube tomorrow. And that's under my name, Linda Schnabel. So I have my own YouTube channel there. So... Um, and we just did the hottest new card out there, the Pinwheel Tower card. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. I appreciate you spending your time with me. And you two ladies, enjoy your new gems as soon as we get these in your little hands. And you have a wonderful evening. Good night, everyone. Thank you.